We're joined now by Brendan Caron Brown. He's an associate professor of conflict resolution and reconciliation at Trinity College in Dublin. Brendan, always good to speak to you on this news hour. So, Brendan, what do you think is Israel's aim in forcing Palestinians to move south now to certain parts of Gaza? Because they say they're trying to stop Hamas. But clearly, this is having a massive impact on the civilian population. What's Israel's end game? Well, <clears throat> thanks again for having me uh, join you. Uh, well, the, their end game hasn't changed. It's been the same from the uh, very beginning. This is about making Gaza unlivable. This is about forcing the Palestinian population living in the Gaza Strip to move out of that land, to become permanently displaced so that they can annex that land and take it over. I mean, this has been clear to anybody that's been following what's been happening since the 7th of October, and in fact, since before then, when the Israeli uh, government have adopted policies of trying to make life as unbearable as possible for the residents of Gaza. This is all part of the plan to expel as many Palestinians as possible. This has nothing to do with eradicating Hamas. This is to make life completely unsustainable for Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip. You know, Brendan, it's interesting you say that all of this began, of course, before October 7th. And those of us who have been following what's been happening for many years now in the occupied territories would understand that. But there are a lot of people who are unfamiliar with the situation, who have only now started reading about or finding out more information about the occupied territories and the occupation that's been going on there for decades. Um, that this year was already the deadliest for Palestinians. As an occupied territory, as a people under occupation, what are the rights of Palestinians when it comes to resisting that occupation? Yeah, absolutely. Palestinians have the right to resist. This is enshrined in international law. This is a, an important uh, important issue that your, your viewers need to be uh, aware of. They have the right to resist colonial occupation, including through armed struggle. Now, that doesn't allow carte blanche when it comes to the, the resistance tactics to be used, but it is very important that we appreciate that those living under an occupation have the right to resist. So when we hear language around Israel's right to self-defense, that we should always take that with a large pinch of salt because the occupier does not have the right to self-defense over an occupied population. That is absolutely critical. And we return to this point. Gaza and the Gaza Strip has been under a brutal siege conditions now for, on, for 16 years. The people in Gaza live really, really tumultuous and difficult lives. They have issues around access to clean drinking water, issues around access to goods and services, are not permitted the opportunity to leave the Gaza Strip. Every facet of life has been controlled by the occupation. And therefore, it is not surprising to see when people actively resist the conditions that they're living in. When we talk about resistance, what are some of those acts of resistance? And can it be argued that what Hamas did, their attack on Israel on October 7th, was a form of resistance? Because, of course, uh, there were over 1,200 people who were killed in Israel and then people who were taken hostage. And, of course, we have seen uh, the result and continue to see the result of that action today in Gaza. Yeah, look, I'm not I'm not here to uh, go into details on Hamas's uh, attacks on the 7th of October, which undoubtedly included uh, acts that are uh, criminal and illegal under international law. But that is not for me to engage in. What I am saying very clearly is that under international law, there is a right to resist. And make, let's make it perfectly clear as well to your viewers that even when Palestinians engage in non-violent acts of resistance, they are shot and they are targeted and they are killed. People need to realize and go back further than 2023. They need to look at the Great March of Return, which involved uh, unarmed Palestinians marching towards the Gaza, uh, the Gaza fence, demanding their uh, the siege be lifted, demanding that they had their rights protected under international law. And they were mowed down by Israeli snipers 
Some 70 were killed at the border fence. These were non-violent protesters. So when it comes to resistance, we need to be very clear that the, the, the line between violent and non-violent resistance, it doesn't really matter because Palestinians get killed anyway. And I think it's absolutely critical that we engage, we engage in a, a, more de a deeper analysis of that. Mm, absolutely. Brendan, Kieran Brown, thank you so much for putting all of that into context for us and our viewers live there from Belfast.